And now, please welcome the CEO of Green for All, Bien Truong. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. good morning. You guys are early birds. You guys are in it to win it. I am so glad because we're in for an important conversation, and we need people who are in it with us. And the first thing I should say is we are going to be in it with some of the most amazing leaders of the world. And as the CEO of the Dream Corps, our mission is to close prison doors and to open doors of opportunity. And for me, thank you, for me, this is an issue that is personal. I'm the youngest of 11 kids, raised in Oakland, California, right? Just across the bridge, but one of the poorest and most polluted communities in Oakland. So for me, this is a personal issue. And so I am so proud to be your masteress of ceremonies today. And to, to bring on stage some of the people who I've worked with, who I've partnered with, who I've been following and fangirling of, um, and now I get to kind of highlight and support their work. And the first person to come on stage is our Attorney General of California. Yes, Attorney General Javier Becerra has been leading the charge to protect all Californians from the effect of the federal rollback of environmental and health standards. He has been leading the charge to protect Californians through his, protect, through his appointed and elected office. In each of his leadership positions, Attorney General Becerra has championed the state's economy by promoting and addressing issues impacting jobs, generating industries such as healthcare, clean energy, technology, and entertainment. He has served 12 terms in Congress. While in Congress, he was the first Latino to serve as a member of the powerful Committee on Ways and Means. He served as chairman of the House Democratic Caucus, was a ranking member of the Ways and Means Subcommittee on Social Security, where he has fought tires tirelessly for working families. Born in Sacramento, California, he is the son of working parents, just like I was, and he is the first in his family to go to college, just as I was. So it is my big honor to welcome him to stage. Please give him a big round of applause. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Good morning. May I ask real quickly, how many of you are not from California? Oh my gosh. You're the ones that have a right, given your jet lag, to not have to get up. Where are all the San Franciscans and all the Californians? All right, there we go. Okay. In the house. In the house. How many are not from the United States of America? Thank you very much for coming to visit. We hope you enjoy. I hope you flew over Washington, D.C. directly to San Francisco, so that way you could have a good time in the United States. I want to say thank you to Vien. Actually, I want to say thank you as well to uh, Governor Jerry Brown for pulling together all of us to talk today about something so crucial and reminding people throughout this country, especially in Washington, D.C., that we will continue to lead in the fight to heal our planet and, and to make sure that we understand the impact of climate change on all of us. And so I want to say thank you to uh, Jerry Brown for being such a leader for not just our state, not just our country, but for the planet as well. In the United States of America, we know the planet is warming whether it's because of those mammoth hurricanes that are coming through, whether it's the record wildfires that we're facing here in California, or whether it's the 90 degree weather that San Francisco is facing even in the summertime when it's supposed to be its coldest, we understand that the climate is changing. In the United States of America, we must accept our share of responsibility for a warming climate, but, but we in California we do not and we will not take responsibility for all the unwanted hot air blowing out of Washington, D.C. when it comes to this particular issue. In California, we don't just believe that it's our responsibility to fight climate change. We're doing it. Why else would Governor Brown sign legislation that is now law that makes California 100 percent reliable on clean energy starting in 2045? And we will make sure that we are carbon neutral by 2045. And remember, we're not just any state. We're the biggest state in the nation. Why else would the California Department of Justice take Donald Trump to court 23 times to defend our planet? 
We've gone to battle over the clean power plan, over our national vehicle emission standards, even to fight for common sense energy efficiency policy for America. And we're doing much, much more. We've secured so far 14 victories in those lawsuits, and we haven't lost a case yet against Washington, D.C. In California, we like to say we're fighting and winning, yeah. and winning for our people and our planet. In California, we say, if you want to go green, you'd better go blue. And fortunately, we're not the only ones pulling our country and our world forward and healing the planet. In the United States, too often we think an environmentalist means the person who's driving in that electric vehicle when in fact we neglect the 20 people who are riding in the bus. Hardworking people around the globe, people of modest means like my parents, are some of the best conservationists in the world because they can't afford not to be. They're not using the air conditioner and all those great systems we have in America to cool or heat their homes. They don't vacation in the hotels here in San Francisco. They sleep like I did in the back of the truck in the camper show with your three other sisters. And you think it's an adventure when you do it that way growing up. Hardworking people are the ones telling their kids, Apaga la luz. Turn off that light when you leave that room. And they're the ones that say, clean up that plate. Don't serve yourself more than you're going to eat. It's too precious. They're the ones that aren't making those unnecessary trips in their cars, if they're fortunate to even own one. The numbers show that low-income folks are our best environmentalists. In the U.S., Low-income households generally use about one-fifth the energy of their wealthier counterparts. Most Americans don't realize this, but our average carbon footprint, it's about 16 metric tons per year. California, which by the way is number one in manufacturing, number one in agriculture, number one in autos, is leading the pack in this country when it comes to reducing that carbon footprint. We're somewhere around 11 metric tons. Still too much, but less than the 16 metric tons per year of our brethren throughout the country. But then you gotta consider the rest of the world. Indonesia, well its footprint is about eight times smaller than America's. Colombia's, some 10 times smaller than America's. Nigeria's more than 30 times smaller than America's carbon footprint. Now, no country or people has a monopoly on good ideas or conservation. The ancient Romans gave us composting. The Incas invented freeze-dried foods. There's a Polish-Israeli engineer who developed drip irrigation. A 24-year-old Kenyan built a shoe that can charge your cell phone as you walk a Colombian who designed a system to reuse water from showers. But we should agree on something. Lower income people face more than their fair share of pollution and health hazards, and they are hit first and worst by climate change. In California, the top 10% of communities most impacted by pollution are overwhelmingly communities of color. More than 18% of Latinos and 17% of African Americans in our state reside in one of those communities that's hardest hit, compared to less than 3% of our white brothers and sisters. That's why at the California Department of Justice, we established an Environmental Justice Bureau for California and for them. Our team of attorneys is working day in and day out to protect the most vulnerable from pollution. And we're making a difference in nearby Oakland, we supported an ordinance prohibiting the storage and handling of coal and petroleum coke. In Southern California, in the Harupa Valley, we helped ensure that its residents would be protected from air pollution spewed by dirty diesel trucks going back and forth on a daily basis right next to schools and homes. In the Central Valley of California, in Arvin, we secured an ordinance that requires new oil and gas sites to be located more than 300 feet 
from residences and schools, hospitals, and parks. We all have more to do to bring all environmentalists to the table. For many of you, it was an absolute certainty that you would be here at this summit. But for some of you, it was an absolute sacrifice to make it here. There are some pretty impressive people around the table here today. But we need to always ask ourselves, who isn't at the table? Those are the people who can be our greatest allies in the environmental movement because they already are our best environmentalists. I hope you will keep engaging with the vulnerable communities around our world. You will keep going to them for solutions. We can't afford these days to have free riders when it comes to healing our planet. Freeloaders are not an option in this country or in this world anymore. And we can't afford, as well, to leave anyone on the sidelines as we work together to fight climate change. And remember, you heard it first here from the Attorney General of the State of California, the first Latino to have that opportunity, the first in my family to have a chance to go to college, the first to have been born here from parents who came from Mexico. Remember this. In California, it's not just about fighting. It's about winning. And that's what has to be our motto. We fight and we win for our planet. And let us include every single person who is the best environmentalist in that fight. That's the way we win. Thank you all very much for being here. Enjoy the rest of this week's summit. Thank you.